thing that we're going to go over in terms of export, and that is exporting to, um, to a QuickTime file. So here, again, it's under File, Export. And now we've already created a recording, so that is what shows up by default here. Um, if it wasn't, uh, if we hadn't created a recording, then our only option would be self-playing, and in which case um, it would use whatever the defaults here were for the delays between slides. Here it's using however long you stayed on an individual slide. That is the timing that will be exported as the video. Now here, again, you have, this is the kind of default base option, 720p. And again, uh, 1024 by 768 is probably closer to a 4.3 aspect ratio. Um, but if you're going to use like a standard player, like in YouTube or something like that, then exporting one of these ones is probably better. Uh, here, I don't, because we're not going smaller, hopefully it's not, not going to screw with our form. It's not really going to screw with our formatting that much. So in this case, we don't really have to worry so much about the, um, the positioning of our text and image shifting. And uh, you can also pick custom. So um, custom is really handy to use if what you're doing is exporting this to use in, um, in another video. I mentioned doing charts. You can do uh, cool little animated charts in Keynote without spending a lot of time on it, like if you have some survey data that you want to incorporate, some poll information, uh, and you just build a quick little animated chart in Keynote, then you have the option here of exporting it with Apple ProRes 422. It will give you really high quality graphics and it will keep the animation and it is a much faster way of kind of going in and building um, an animated graph than it would be if you did it in a program like After Effects. I mean, After Effects, of course, is super sophisticated. You can do a lot, but it's going to take you a lot longer to do an animated graph in After Effects than it would by just doing it in Keynote and then exporting it from here. Now here, I'm going to go back to uh, so I, I want to do custom. Say I do want to keep it at a standard video size. I can still type in 1920 by 1080, and you can see it. It really wants to keep it as um, the kind of a 4-3 option. So every time I type in a number, it changes it here. Um, I'm just going to go with here. I'm not worried about graphs or importing it into something else. So I'm just going to go with the standard 1080p. Actually, let's go with 720p so we can see what the quality of the text is. And uh, let's just see what that looks like. So I'm just going to put it in the same folder. And it will export the movie. And then when it's done, you should have a... Um, Now, uh, Apple is hiding all the extensions, but it's going to be an M4B file, which is just Apple's version of an MP4. So we're going to open that up. And even at the smaller size, at 720p, I can see that and once it's done, um, I'm it looks pretty good in terms of the quality of the text. I'm just going to scrub through it. The time I spend on each... And you can hear... A well, you probably hear it um, at a little bit of a distance because I'm not recording the computer audio, just my audio. Uh, but the, narr the voiceover is included here as well. So the timing and narration have both been recorded. And uh, going, even though it's at, uh, I chose 720, you can see that it's actually kept, kept it to um, a 4-3 aspect ratio because that's what it was created in, so there's no distortion. And uh, this gives me a fairly high quality small file size that then I can turn around and either send directly to someone or um, I can upload to a program like 
uh, I, I mean a web hoster like YouTube or Vimeo and have it uh, live there.